Hey, <laughs> come on, rookie. This is the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to tonight's edition of the Pit Stop where you, you the Sim Pit, you the Pit Crew, you are the real star of today's show. Thank you for being here. Happy Friday to everybody. And before I even get started, hi, Greg. That's my brother getting home from work. Uh, yeah, I just had to mute it because I was going to be swearing and didn't want to do the push ups. Welcome to the second edition of the Friday Night Pit Stop, where we are here to kick off our weekend, and uh, I think it's just perfect to do this in the evening so that we can just head into the weekend with a barrel of steam. So there are a few other reasons that I love doing this show at night, the first one being uh, just that it is uh, peaking your audio quite a bit. Peak, peak, peak! Peak, 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 peak! Ah, oh, all these things, all these things, too many things. Anyway, uh, I love doing this on Friday night because, uh, again, just a slightly different change of pace. The morning's great, that's fun, that's great. Perfect on a Monday to start the week, but on a weekend, going into the weekend, I think Friday night is the time to do it. And then on top of it, if we're going to do some fun racing, which we're working on expanding our list beyond just iRacing. So I know a lot of you think uh, this show is being very iRacing centric, but... We are actually going to, uh, we're working on bringing on our factor set, of course, uh, Project Cars, the works, everything, Automobilista. Uh, we're not trying to play any kind of uh, volume. Wrong knob moved. It's still peaking, huh? All right, you guys are just going to have to live with it. It's, oh, I don't have time for this. It's because uh, we did this. It's probably because I turned it on. Sound is coming from your clip-on mic. No, 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 it's not. That's impossible. Um, it's this mic. Test, test, test. No, it's overdriven in Windows. Hold on. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test your microphone. All right. I think that's better. Uh, I think because we didn't have the microphone on, it was overdriving it uh, because I turned it on after the fact. I think that should be should take care of it. Um, thank you for your audio help, by the way. I don't know why I missed that. I Actually, that should have worked. I don't know why that didn't work today. I went through all my normal procedures. Um, Cody Osborne taking advantage of the Friday night pit stop. All right. So, yeah, I love doing this on a Friday night because it kicks off the weekend nicely. It's it's fun. And then on top of it, tonight we are going to do some fun racing. So we are uh, at 6 o'clock. The room is already hosted. 6 o'clock, uh, there will be a hosted room on iRacing, and we're going to be running the GT1 cars. So that would be the Corvette C6R the Aston Martin DBR9, and the Ford GT. Those three cars, we're going to be running at Zandvoort. So that's going to be at 6 o'clock. The password is going to be SimPit2020. So it is passworded, but there it is. Everybody can join us. SimPit2020 at 6 o'clock. Um, you heard TV and dishes in the kitchen in the background. <laughs> My brother's entertaining the dog. My printer's going into the background. We've got all sorts of things going on around here. So, speaking of going on around here, what is going on in the world of sim racing? iRacing had a bunch of little things. There was really nothing that big. So, I'm just going to kind of blow through their page. This is the Twitter page for iRacing. Starting with Pablo Lopez. Welcome to week 13. Last lap in the ridiculousness with the Williams FW31. So, here is his lap. You've probably already been seeing it going. Fragger, I'm sorry. I'm, it's, I'm always thinking that. Oh, oh, look at that ridiculousness. Um, it's so hard for me to pick content and then, or, or time slots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the password is not Super Dave Osborne. The password is Simpit2020. Exactly, Dave. I cannot go long. We have to get this thing wrapped up. So there's Pablo Lopez. Uh, my The reason I, I showed this and talked about it is, uh, have you done any? I've done like no racing in week 13. I test out the damage model after it happened. And then I've been busy on other things for the most part. But, like, last night I was going to race, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's week 13. I'm not inspired. Are you inspired during week 13, or is that just another week off of uh, racing? Uh, Fox NASCAR posting a lap here. This is Reagan Smith 
showing off uh, a lap around Phoenix Raceway. So it looks like he's got a Thrustmaster wheel. Yep, that's a Thrustmaster wheel. Um, I, I go faster than that at Phoenix, by the way. That, I know that looks a little slow to me. But yeah, he's uh, talking people through the way to get around Phoenix, which is a very unique. Uh, Phoenix is one of those one-of-a-kind tracks. So if there's ever a track you might want to listen to, how do you get around this place, that would be it. You'll find it at the Twitter page. In addition to that, um, next weekend, how many of you guys are going to participate in this? We've got the IMSA 90 Minutes of Sebring. Week 13 is a comedy. Steam King! Steam King! Statman in the house! How you doing, buddy? Uh, iRacing March 5th. They posted this just yesterday. So this is... We've got a fun one for you. Next weekend, take the Audi TCR or the new Porsche Cayman for a spin in the IMSA 90 Minutes of Sebring. Think you have what it takes to capture the checkered in this special event? Anyway, um, there it is. If you want to participate... Um, I think you can run this as a team or solo, depending on whichever you want. Breaking news. Billy Strange was sick, but still got out on a new video on YouTube. All right. All right. I don't have a link here, but check out Billy Strange Racing on YouTube. Apparently, he has a new video. Do you know the content, Dave? But what's, what's, what's our good friend Billy talking about out there? I wonder that too, Dave. Is anyone going to run that Audi versus the Porsche? Number one. The paint isn't even dry yet on the Porsche. New new candy, right? And then the other is the Audi with its front-wheel drive. That's the front-wheel drive Audi, right? That changes everything. Um, what else? JR Motorsports. Josh Berry will have a familiar name along for the ride on his number 88 light model for JRM when the 2020 Cars Tour season kicks off this weekend. So you can see the familiar... Um, Tom Jones, Tom Jones. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is cool for him. iRacing getting their name out there. Um, he zigged when he could have zagged. Whatever. Uh, Kyle Long, looking forward to putting down some laps in his home office. So here's Kyle Long's home office setup for racing. Another one of those people. What are you guys' thoughts? Oh, I love this, though. Those are the home security cameras. You ever get a little claustrophobic or weird when you're in your rig and you're like, I can't see or hear anything. The whole Someone could come up and completely murder me and I would be unknown. Uh, not if you have big giant security cameras up on your wall. Uh, the other thing, what about these monitor angles? How do you guys feel about that? Monitor angles of that extreme uh, coming almost straight back at... That's like 80 degrees not 45 that's 80 degrees almost perpendicular to the center screen or at least it looks like it in this photo <coughs> yes we talked about that coca-cola speedway steam that's big news that's awesome um that's the worst in vr <laughs> Trying to get Kyle Long to join the sim pit? That would be awesome. Monitors are movable to get in and out. All right. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I'm kind of stuck on that 45-degree angle. But I get it. I see why you do it. It's it's more wraparound, more immersion, right? Um, what else? Somebody about to have a really nice weekend. This is posted. Carolina Sim. Now, this is pretty funny. A Carolina SimWorks sticker on an R seat. That is blatantly an R seat. That's even the seat from an R seat, not even an adaption of a Sparco or something. That's an R seat seat on an R seat rig with a Carolina SimWorks sticker. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyway, I'm not sure who this is for. Ooh, could we zoom in on the photo? I don't think we can. Love to zoom in on the photo. It's a, yeah, it's a little more, more angle. Fish eye lens. All right. Um. Oh, I want to be able to zoom in. Copy image. Open my paint shop. I want to know if we can creep on this photo. Can you guys read it? I 
I can't see. Oh, another one of these curved triple screens. Anyway, uh, that, that did amuse me quite a bit, I will say. Um... Anyway, that's pretty funny. Okay, what else? What else do we have to talk about? Um, some preseason testing going on. Revs Racing. Rev Racing? Who's Rev Racing? Home of the NASCAR Drive for Diversity program. Racing in the NASCAR k &N Pro Series East NASCAR Well and All American Series. Um, Rev Racing. And Raja Karuth stopped by today. So Rev Racing and Raja Karuth came by the iRacing Studios and did some practice. You can see him there running in the track. <laughs> yeah, I am. And then another post here, uh, iRacing. Could Raja Karuth be the next NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series broadcast director? Um, there you go. That's them. Even look at their control board. You know, you think about me running two computers five monitor uh, six monitors three computers four webcams two microphones two stream decks look at this control board that would help i need a control board you guys anybody dri driven link Bain Bainan? anybody driven hell i was talking to john hill about hell and how much better that permanent facility uh cross track is compared to the little dinky drop down tracks that they've done um Looks like a music studio control board. Wouldn't that be nice? I, sh I need a giant control board here to control. Uh, I I've been talking to Tofi and a few other people about all of our, you know, audio and video sources and trying to do things right. Um, that's what I need. Big giant control board right here. Control computer over there. Control computer over there. Boom, boom. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, have you guys? Yes, yes. Laz Lazor, my 3D printer is running in the background. I've decided at this point we've just completely knocked the doors down. That's why we don't need a control board, because we're actually not trying to be NBC, CBS, or NASCAR, or anything of the sort. We are the sim pit. We are more of um, what you would do, more of being in the garage, actually one of the teams, one of the driving teams. So, yeah, it's okay that we have a 3D printer going in the background, because what we're working on is printing 3D parts for you, literally. Right now, literally... I am printing the other cone. So here is the wind sim cone for the giveaway wind sim. Mine is already on my rig up and running and I'm loving it. And now I'm printing the second one. One will be in orange, one will be in blue. Here's part of it. Uh, we're printing the other uh, mount. So this is very important to the show. No reason to stop the printer. <laughs> Um, Billy, we just promoted your show just a moment ago. We were talking about, despite you being sick, uh, we, we know that you put out a video anyway. Cone fixation. <laughs> hey, Terry. Oh, I'm so glad. Did it break everything? It stayed together. It stayed in one piece, I hope, Terry. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Sorry, it took a little while to get it there. I'm terrible at shipping stuff, but it did get there along with stickers. Great. T Terry being the winner of our January patron race and his trophy just arrived. Phil Scruton should be getting his p trophy any day now. Uh, it has to go through customs to get up across the border. Um, <laughs> send it over and you'll do a review. <laughs> I'm doing the review. Okay, so Neonite, that's a great question. If you've driven the Rallycross track in iRacing and in Project Cars, um, which do you think is better? And have you ever seen the real-life track? I've never seen the real-life track, so even though I haven't uh, driven the iRacing version yet to make the direct comparison, I don't know what the real-life one really is like. Oh, they'll look great on the rig, Terry. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. I'm glad. Congratulations. Hey, Izzy, how you doing? All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Dave Blair. All right, what else do we have? I, I, I need to do that. I almost made tonight's event at this track, but I didn't want to force people to buy more content. I mean, obviously, if you don't have Zanvort, and if you didn't catch the beginning of the show, 6 o'clock, that's only 
43 minutes from now, um, we are going to be racing the GT1 class. That's the Aston Martin versus the uh, the Corvette versus the Ford GT at Zandvoort. We got it, Mr. Thon. Everybody, I would like everybody right now to take a moment to thank Mr. Thawman. He's here in the chat. He rarely makes the show live. You see Mr. Thawman in the chat. Mr. Thawman is the number one news reporter at the Sim Pit. When we're doing this show, the Pit Stop, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I come up with probably about 10 stories. Mr. Thawman comes up with 20. Uh, so when we're going through all the great news and things to talk about in sim racing, it would not happen if it weren't for the dedicated work of Mr. Thawman. So yes, please thank him and just understand how important he is to this show in particular. Um, anyway. All right, what else? What else? R Factor. <laughs> they are posting regarding that BMW Motorsport Cup racing. We got our 30 drivers to conquer the Nürburgring. Grats to Pierluca Amato for leading the charge. BMW Motorsport Cup racing at its best next week, Wednesday. Who's getting the ticket to the BMW live event and joins McCall Smith. Anyway, so that's going on uh, next weekend, I believe, right? Next week. Next Wednesday, sorry. And that's going to be, is that going to be round two? Round two in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Project Cars. Oh, so this isn't actually Project Cars. This is actually World's Fastest Gamer. Uh, Project Cars is making the congratulations, though. Big congratulations to James Baldwin on his incredible next step in his racing career. We can't wait to see how his virtual GT3 skills will translate to the real thing. Post by James Baldwin, this being yesterday. Here we go. Announcement time. I will be racing for the Jensen Team Rocket RJN in the GT World Challenge Endurance Series. In the beast pictured above. Well, it's actually below here, but we're not going to hold you to that, James. McLaren 720 GT3. Click on the link for the press official press release. We're going to do that. Let's look at these photos, though. Man, awesome. So badass. I'm so jealous. Look at James Baldwin. And looking at... That ain't... That ain't... That is not a sim car. That is the real deal machine. And he will be racing for real. For Jensen Button, no less. Uh, that's pretty badass. Oh, there's... I didn't have anything that... I, this is our thumbnail of the day. I don't know if you... <laughs> I didn't actually have any news relating to this, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> uh, he's got a sim rig for a sponsor. I'm assuming Sparco is his sponsor. Isn't Sparco Rigs a sponsor of World's Fastest Gamer? Um... Oh, I see on the car. I think that's just there. Ah, oh, I see. It's for a pro am racing series, and I'm guessing that he is allowed to be considered an amateur. That is, he's running with Chris Buncombe. Do you guys know Chris Buncombe from Great Britain? That's a cool shot, man. Can you imagine if that was you? Can you imagine if this was you right here? Paint scheme. All right. Anyway, here it is, the write-up from World's Fastest Gamer. World's Fastest Gamer winner to race for Jensen Team Rocket RJN. And, oh, that's cool right there. Check that out. RC Pro-Am. <laughs> that's the Jensen button livery from Braun. Thank you, Alex. Congratulations, James. That's awesome. Uh, Baldwin will join teammate Chris Buncombe at the preseason test for the GT World Endurance Championship at Circuit Paul Ricard on March 12th and 13th. Awesome. Awesome. All right. What else? Uh, dirt. I didn't. MXer, the room is already set up. The room launches at 6 o'clock, whether I or anyone else is ready to go. Password, Simpit2020. If you want to race with us, Friday night fun with the Simpit crew. 
Six o'clock is when the room, that is uh, 40, 38 minutes from now. Uh, yes, an emergency alert. Virus alert. <laughs> Bad touch alert. SWAT. I mean, Amber. Tom, you got it. It was an Amber alert. Two years ago for Dirt Rally. We're about to go live with the Dirt Rally 2.0 anniversary show. Come join us as we celebrate a year of action. I guess it's one year. <laughs> Dirt Rally 2.0 is one. Um, that's a track for iRacing alert. So anyway, uh, it was an hour and 17 minutes, and they are calling it the Dirt Rally 2.0 Anniversary Special. Join PJ, Chris, Jenny, and James as we look back on the year and challenge each other to see who's, who's fastest, fastest. Uh, I'm just going to tune ahead. Get some audio going on that. Oh, they take intermissions too. I can't hear him. Like when you're racing, like, <laughs> no you touchy touchy. Like like oh, we just talked about that, Eric. Um, sort of yeah, if you have any questions for me, type in some sort of question marks and then your question. That way I'll see it. Or uh, some exclamation marks. So if it's a comment for the group, uh, we did talk about Hell Track on iRacing, and I have not driven it. We were talking about, are there comparisons, uh, there we go, are there comparisons between it and the Project Cars version of it? Oh, were they Germaned out? I couldn't even hear it, Tom. It's a fun track. I love that track in, in Project Cars. I, uh, John Hill and I had a conversation about it being a purpose-built track and how much more fun that actually is than those throwdown, drop-down tracks that they use in iRacing for Rallycross. Yeah, well, Greece is a, is a, um, is a, um, oh, there they are. Ooh, and then they had another guest. Yeah, that's, that's this well, guy. Chris picked the stages, so. <laughs> oh, so. Yeah, that's, anyway, that's their two-year or one-year anniversary special. Um, F1 game. Want to hear a special F1 podcast about F1 eSport? You're in luck. Featuring their very own director, Lee Mather. You can give it a listen right here. So if you want to hear, Billy, you're in the car. If you're looking for a podcast, there is a Formula One game, F1 eSport show that just came out. Uh, podcast, Inside the Thrilling World of F1 eSport, Formula One. John Hill is here. Remember, we were just talking about uh, Hell Track and it being a purpose-built track. You are very welcome, Eric Sp Smith. I never mind, you guys. Uh, you got my back. You're the real star of today's show, Eric Smith. Just making sure that we cover all of the news. <laughs> and Lee Mather as the beaver. Um, did you know Racing Line is actually an acronym? That's so stupid. Read about Codemasters if new game. Like, that. if you were going to do this, that's the best you can do. I'm sorry, I have to give you a hard time about that one. But now you're stumbling on trying to be smart. If you're going to try to be smart, you better be smart. <laughs> Read about Codemasters if new game. Literature intrigues no entertains. That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, we can look at what they had to say. Cody's Racing Line, March 5th. Again, these are the topics. When you do a show three days a week, we talk about everything that they include in their racing line by the time they put it out. So all, none of this is new news. Uh, talking about their patch for F1 2019. Yep, we talked about it. Grid, we talked about that. Uh, new community manager um, that they have. Dirt Rally 2.0. I guess we didn't talk about the uh, anniversary show. We did talk about the full series. They did that. Uh, here, I'm going to click on this. Their full series of lessons. So if you're a big Dirt Rally fan, lesson one, the basics, lesson two, advanced techniques, you're going to find this on YouTube under Dirt, Dirt Rally on YouTube. Uh, seven different lessons tell, telling you how to get up to speed on the dirt. Um, what else? We are on a time, a truncated time. We're on a truncated timetable, people. All right, another one of these videos from Gran Turismo. Things got a little heated between Porsche, BMW, and Audi in Sydney. So they're giving us a little head-to-head, -head, just showing us the emotion, what guys look like in the moment. Talking smack, it looks like. 
I have my audio on, yeah. I can't hear it, but I guess you guys can. Not having that. Go, mate, go. Porsche Cayman, okay. I'm assuming. Go. Yep. Right, what do you know? I'm going. That slut. That little slut. Anyway, another exciting moment out of the GT manufacturing series. <laughs> um, so WRC, the official game. Rally Mexico is starting next week, and so will a third round of the eSport WRC. Face the best drivers in the world and prepare yourself by learning the rally's itinerary. So, if you want to just see where you stand against those guys, you know, we're going to start seeing times and how they do. Maybe you're going to want out. You know, that's how do you guys feel about that when it comes to rally racing? Um, real life rally, I think one of the things that really makes the drivers so fantastic is their ability to deal with changing terrain, changing circumstances. And yes, their co driver has pace notes. Yes, they maybe have riven, driven some of the stages in the past, but the way those stages might change in the course of 12 months, it might be completely different for both. And that's part of rally racing, very unlike circuit racing. When you look at like WRC on the world championship level, when you look at, at, at tracks that for the most part, even if there's deformation, come on, how much deformation is there? compared to real life 12 months of time going by um is it the same i mean and is it fair i mean is it odd that we would be able to know the stages like the back of a hand like you do know a circuit we're gonna run at zanvort i don't need to think about it i know zanvort i just need two three laps to figure out the car with zanvort and i'll be up to speed that's what circuit racing is all about but in rally racing, that's not really in the spirit of the competition. Is that the right wording? And am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? Uh, but, you know, you think the eSport competitors, they could run these stages a thousand times in advance of their timed run. Now, it's still a timed competition. It's still racing against your, your fellow competitors. So it still comes down to what can you do. But I do not feel that it emulates rally and the spirit of rally quite the same as other versions of motorsport esport yeah that is the king of elevation change mount panorama uh max pappas retweeting this this is a wheel being produced by rick motek but it was actually tweeted by max pappas anyway this is a real gear wheel pro mpi f4 wheel for direct drive servos 879 dollars that actually is a pretty good price for that kind of wheel, you guys. I didn't even realize the pricing. 879 sounds expensive on one hand. That's $879 for a wheel rim. But on the other hand, $879 is not a lot for an add-on wheel for a direct drive motor that comes along with its own SLI um, buttons and everything ready to go. Not bad at all. I believe I drove that wheel at at uh pri if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> i think it was a prototype then but now it's official so race department made a very very big announcement and i need to actually apologize to my buddy bram he and i have been playing phone tag message tag for like a month as he's been trying to relay some news to me that he wanted to tell me about this being a very big announcement by race department so Race Department posting this on the 4th. This is Wednesday after the show. New eSport platform aims to be an umbrella service for racing games. All right, let's go check out the post. This is this is actually another article on it. So this kind of got some legs, some news running around out there. Um, the new eSport platform aims to be an umbrella service for racing games. Sim Racing GP, a new online platform for Sim Racing eSports, aims to improve... The experience of competitive multiplayer racing bringing it a step closer to the world of motorsport. Um, and the Sim Racing GP, GP platform simplifies organizing and hosting online practice sessions, single races, and championships. Um, the Rexing? Uh, what's the Rexing, Bucho? 
Um, what is Rexing? Help me out. Hey, Will. Um, whoops, sorry. So this is big news. SGP is a joint venture between Race Department and technology investment partner Nascent. Esport ready with expanding driver database and marketplace for sponsorship. So this could be, <clears throat> this could be Race Room trying to kind of corner and create a platform where esport could go to without having to create their own uh, thing. Thomas something, COO of NASA and adds, racing with SGP estimates the need for individuals to maintain expensive dedicated servers. Every sim racer will be able to freely host their races on our platform developed on Amazon Web Services. So when you see that commercial for Amazon now, you actually know uh, something that we do. Um, oh, my print finished. Yay! That would have been part two. So part one being the mount that I designed. Part two being the modified back of the... Doesn't this look like a target for like a, a, a gun sight? <laughs> um, that would have been the back for that mount. Now we have to now we have to do the cone. All right. Um, I said race department, didn't I? No audio. Why are you guys messing with me? Why are you messing with me? <laughs> yeah race department not not race department i know yeah bram yep Theodore. yeah it was you not me here's another article open pr worldwide public relations talking about new esport platform aims to be an umbrella service for racing games uh sim racing gp the largest sim racing website race department and technology investor nascent are launching a new racing esport platform sim racing gp um I guess we could create our own eSport. Here's another article, PR.com, new eSport platform, Sim Racing GP, aims to be an umbrella service for racing games. We are right now, did I, I, I know I said race department earlier, but thank you for that. You are the real star of today's show. Thank you for that. Always got my back, people. Um, please do, Thunder. We're going to show some rigs here today. Um, I'm going to remind you all one more time, 26 minutes till the room opens up on iRacing. So iRacing at 6 o'clock, we will have Simpit Community Racing. All you're going to need is the content. You're going to need the GT1 cars, one of the GT1 cars, the Corvette, the Aston Martin, or the Ford GT. You're going to need Circuit de Zandvoort, and we're going to be uh, one hour practice qualifying and then a 22 lap race that will start up at about 7 o'clock my time. So 25 minutes till that room opens up. Simpit 2020 is the password. Moving right along. What else to talk about? Oh, there's another. Here's the actual. This is actually the website for Sim Racing GP. You can join the beta. Gita. And I think we have covered this story pretty well. Manage leagues and tournaments with ease. Integrated game servers. No hassle import of race results. Supercharge your team experience. Track your driver performance. Track new team and league sponsors. Hello, Portugal. Welcome. Welcome. <coughs> oh, check this out. So this is posted at PC Gamer. <laughs> this Japanese gamer bed is gaming's final form. This is a bed, you guys. This is a desk built around a bed. He's got it inclined. He's in his Snuggie. Um, <laughs> do you need a sim racing bed? Cup holders. You got to have cup holders in bed, right? Um, and then you can sleep. Oh, but we... Man, this is the weirdest. This is so weird. This guy's got two cups over here. He's got a bottle of Coke over here. And then he's got all the snacks. And now he's in recline like I'm going to bed mode, but... Oh, got to eat some more snacks. You've got your arm on arm tablet holder. What's this all about? <laughs> Is that proving that it's really his bed? <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, all right, I'm going to chalk that up as our strange one of the day. What do you guys think? Can we do better? Uh, all right, what else? What else? Um, so we were talking about Funko. Thank you, Mr. Thawman, Th for sending this in. Uh, if you guys were, I think I was even on Twitch, like, custom making my own Funko Pop. Pop? Is that what it is? Funko Pop toy? Uh, anyway, apparently there are a bunch of NASCAR ones. So I was looking at the, the, the Mach 5, thinking about buying it just to tear the head off and put my own head on it. Uh, yeah, someone's going to get really fat in that bed. Um, anyway, there's your Richard Petty pop toy. If you're, <laughs> this is at Funko. I didn't know they had NASCAR editions. Uh, you get it. NASCAR, uh, Earnhardt. There you go. The Intimidator Funko pop toy. Or Jimmy Johnson, the bearded version of Jimmy Johnson, by the way. Um, the Ravencroft, <laughs> Tom Jones, Bucho, both well played very quickly. <clears throat> a perfect gremlin, awesome. Uh, I need to tear the head off of a appropriate bobblehead so we can 3D print my head and put it on top of it. Droid Gamers talking about the acclaimed strategy racing game Motorsport Manager finally goes online. Wow. Development PlaySport Games has re released an online version of its widely acclaimed strategy, acclaimed strategy game Motorsport Manager. It's called Motorsport Manager Online. So now you can play against others, which is really, really cool. Um, oh, Brad, that's tough. <laughs> Just shave my head. That's all. Hey Raul, how you doing? It's coming. I'm 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 working on it. Join the swarm. Um, so Zwift Insider. I'm kind of going back and forth on how much we're going to cover this. It's legitimately an esport, but I and it's legitimately racing, but I also know that it's definitely not um, sim racing as we think of it. Anyway, uh, they did a big Machines for Freedom, uh, a, a special event in honor of Woman's Day. Anyway, this is the real, real reason I brought it up. So if you participated in the event, you get this special jersey that you could then make part of your avatar, rider tar, um, for in the game. And it just made me think, this is something I'd like to see more of in sim racing across the board. Uh, P4, what about, we're gonna be doing some Automobilista over the, uh, two over the weekend. Um, other than that, I mean, we've talked about it being up. We've talked about there being a few videos. We've talked about, um, their rollout and all that kind of stuff. We've been following it, I mean, pretty regularly on the show. Uh, I do have a copy. I just, the last, uh, few days I've been out of town and, uh, just trying to catch back up on things. So this weekend we will be doing some Automobilista 2 here on the show. But anyway, so you unlock the kit. And I just thought, wouldn't it be cool? You know, you run a, uh, you know, let's use this iRacing as an example. So remember that we're on Zwift. So one of the last things we talked about was, are you going to run in the iRacing BMW? Uh, where's their 120? I passed it. Where's the 120? This one. Okay, so if you were going to run this event, um, and you're going to run the IMSA 90 Minutes of Sebring. Wouldn't it be cool if certain events unlocked certain things? And when I say unlock, maybe it's just a simple contingency sticker. Maybe next year, California Club sticker, you get another little st sticker that says Participant 90 Minutes of Sebring. Um, wouldn't that be kind of cool? So when I look at a game like Zwift, you know, and I think of us as the leaders of the sim racing world, not Zwift. Um... But if you did the race, you would then unlock that graphic. And I believe there is a, 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 a bike that you could ride as well. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff that I would love to see more of, whether it be iRacing, which is so cleansed and hardcore and no fun factor whatsoever. But I'd also like to see it on a different level. We just bring up Automobilista. We bring up uh, our factor had a big event. It, I would love there to be unlockable things that show you. It's sort of like a, a unicorn car. Uh, it's that ability to show other people when you participated on that grand scale. Um, anyway, I think that'd be kind of cool, something they can incorporate into sim racing very easily. 
Stickers are responsible for 90% of human humanity achievements. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what would you do for a free sticker, right? What would you do for a free in-game paint scheme? Unlockable paint schemes. Exactly, Dave Blair. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a, a paint scheme that the only people that could use it are people that actually ran in per certain events? I, I think that would be very cool, and it wouldn't be that hard to incorporate. Prize cars, yep. Now we're giving away money, Tom, but I hear where you're coming from. Uh, Nagasaki Strider, now available in GTA Online. When is, GTA Online, they just don't quit. They just don't stop. Whether you're talking about open, real-wheeled racers, characters, events, the whole uh, heist mode, you got to give... And, and, you know, when, when we talk about Codemasters and I'm like, well, this is update 1.63.215... You guys are like, well, maybe eventually they'll fix their broken game. That's like the big joke. Um, no one makes that accusation about Grand Theft Auto, though. I mean, I've never heard anyone call Grand Theft Auto a broken game. So as they come out with more and more DLC, more and more updates or content, they are bettering the game, not just fixing a broken game. Um, no, it won't. It's it's the king. Is GTA the king? What is? Does anybody know off offhand? Um, participation awards. Ah, I've well played John Hill. Um, it, what is the biggest money? Is GTA the most money making game out there? Or is it, uh, what was the other one I heard the other day that was just astounding how much money they had made? It was in the B word, billions, obviously. Um, Okay. The Strider will hardly break the bank, even at full price. I think they said $670,000. Yeah. This oddity can be yours for GTA $670,000 or for the trade points of GTA's 502, blah, blah, blah. Um, Fortnite? Is Fortnite the king? Hey, Mr. Wayne. That's awesome. Awesome. Oh, you have the best wife. Give your wife a big giant kiss for me for being such a huge fan and supporter of sim racing. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know what makes the most. Uh, Retro Respawn, Ridge Racer 64. Uh, seeing as I played Nintendo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, released 2000. Like, uh, 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 I guess there's a new ver version. I, I missed something here trying to read it. Um, Ridge Racer series more on PlayStation. I'm not sure. Is there a new Ridge Racer? <laughs> Did I miss something here? <laughs> uh, no, FIFA does not make more money. It's good to be the king. Have a good one, Will. Thanks for joining the show. Uh, Speed 51 Elite Cup Series drivers open with a clash. The Speed 51 Elite Racing join APS.com Cup Series knock kick their season off Tuesday night with a clash of their series best drivers. The field of 16 drivers. Sounds like a little all-star race. Fortnite, Tom Jones, Fortnite, $2.4 billion. Billion dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just printing money, Steam. AMS 2, yes, I knew there was an update coming. I was actually warned to wait for that update. I think it came out yesterday for AMS 2. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're very welcome, Mr. Wayne. Thank your wife for us. Fortnite, $2.4 billion. Can you believe it? That's insane. That is That is insane. Only selling skins. Yeah, it's a free game. It's a free game. Wow. Insane. All right. Field of 16 drivers representing the best of last season's Cup Series field took the virtual new Smyrna Speedway in a three-segment race. The 100-lap race featured breaks. Speaking of race, tonight's race. Tonight's race coming up in 14 minutes. Oh, we got to jam. We got to jam. We got to get through these stories. We, we're live in 13 minutes racing. 
uh, Simpit 2020 hosted room on iRacing. Simpit Friday night fun with the community. Everybody's welcome to join us. GT1 cars, that's the Aston Martin, the Corvette C6R, and the Ford GT at Zanvoort. One hour of practice followed by a 10-minute qualifying and a 22-lap race all coming up in about 13 minutes so real quick let's go through these stories sorry you guys got to cut it short but we got to have our fun gt planet talking about the gt sport gr super cup returning for 2020 so we talked about that going on last season they are re gonna re uh re return with it mikhail has all won the 2019 version of it here's a write-up here at automobile sport also talking about the renewing of that series that's good to see that sponsorship, Toyota always being very big with uh, GT Sport. You know, they have it in with the Japanese car companies, that's for sure. Nissan, Toyota, Honda, those companies have always been very good to GT Sport. I think GT Sport's always been very good to them. Um, you know, if there was one sponsor I'd be excited to get. I, gotta, I have to admit, I am just a big, giant Oakley fan. I love Oakley. Uh, sunglasses. I just do. They make great sunglasses, even though they've been bought out by Sunglass Hut or whatever that parent company is. And Oakley's not quite the Oakley it was when it was thermonuclear protection back in the 80s. But they still, in my opinion, make some of the best uh, uh, glasses out there. Anyway, MotoGP Esport Championship partners with Oakley. Can you imagine? You know, oh, here's your little care package for being an esport racer with MotoGP and you know, here's a four hundred pair dollar pair of sunglasses. Uh, also, talk from MotoGP Esport Online Challenge Number One: How to be fast under the floodlights. The first stage of the 2020 MotoGP Esport Championship is already underway, with hopefuls taking on the low sail international circuit aboard Valentino Rossi's Monster Energy Yamaha M1. Here's how to do it. So, if you want to do a uh, Max disagrees. If you want to compete in that, there's a little heads up on how to do it. Two-time world championship, Trastevere, 73. We mentioned this guy's name at least 100 times covering eSport last year. Uh, should he qualify for the Global Series via the pro draft, Lorenzo Doretti, a.k.a. Trust, ever I can't. 73 will represent Monster Energy Yamaha in the 2020 MotoGP Esport Championship for the second season running. Tom Jones asks, Sean, did you ever have one of those ultra-hot stickers on your car in the 80s? Thermonuclear protection. No, I did not put that sticker on my car. I uh, 80s. So I had a Santa Cruz Skateboards and a Diver Down uh, uh, sticker on my back windshield of my Camaro. So... Wow, that sounds so freaking cliche. <laughs> and hair down to here. Oh, geez. All right. GT Planet talking about Motorsport Australia honoring GT Sport Cody Lepkowski. Um, so the governing race car. Uh, Motorsport Australia, the governing body for car racing in the country, has included eSport champion Cody Lukowski in its annual awards event. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So we are now honoring the next uh, eSport. We're being honored on a real motorsport level. It's, it's happening, you guys. Whether you're talking James Baldwin getting a real-life ride, whether you're talking about real-life honors from Cody Lukowski, or whether you're talking about like the, re the coverage and the NASCAR guys and how they're just embracing the heck out of sim racing at this point in time, putting us up on the stage, putting us in front of the limelight. Uh, we are there. We are there. Uh, baldness is the head's revenge for sporting a mullet. I never had a mullet. I never did a mullet. That was not my style. All right, what else? A few more things, and then we're going to break into racing. So Bahrain GP issues. Okay. Bahrain GP issues new advisory for safe F1 race amid COVID-19 fears, coronavirus. All right. Uh, we joked about the corona bed. Yes, yes, we can joke about this. But it's now kind of overlapping in my world, and I want your guys' thoughts and opinions on this. Here's another article here. Coronavirus could be good for gaming businesses, top execs say. That makes total sense because when you think about the companies that the news is reporting having a problem, travel industry, uh, airlines, cruise lines, hotel rooms, uh, service industry, um, uh, restaurants, uh, big events, whether it's baseball, football, soccer, um, these are the kind of things that could be facing problems in the coming year. Things that are expected to do very well as a result of the virus. And I'm not trying to be political. I'm just talking about, well, this is what these things shape 
our economy. These sh things shape our environment. Indoor gaming could become bigger than ever purely because of coronavirus. So think about it. Yes, gaming business. It's a stay-at-home activity. So these are the kind of things that are expected to do well. Now, from my perspective, um, and don't mention, I just booked a, I'm working a party. It's a corporate party for a sim company that I just booked in May in Vegas. And I booked it with no fear. But it just made me kind of think at the same time, wow, it could get bad to the point. I mean, I heard Austin has uh, just canceled one of their big annual events that brings $345 million to the city each year. Um, yeah, we're going to all be in our ga gaming beds. <laughs> Mr. Thalman. Oh, we're going to buy stock in gaming beds. There you go. Anyway, um, at what point do you pull the pig? Plug. Pull the pig. When do I pull the plug? When do I say enough is enough? I don't go in public. Um, I'm not there yet, and I don't want to turn this into a coronavirus, but it is starting to get to the point where it's going to affect the gaming industry. Uh, will they still do eSport term tournaments in person, or is iRacing going to be the last man standing because they actually do it online? Anyway, just a little thought on how this might affect even our world. I know more people are going to be indoor sim racing, that's for sure. Less people going to the movies, less people going to the ball game, less people going out for dinner, more people sitting at home racing. Train Sim World 2020 Win 10 Achievement List Revealed, bundled with three DLC packs. You can find all that at True Achievements. Lionheart, our good friends at Lionheart, they're getting ready to kick off their season. I'm talking with them on Sunday about what the Sim Pit's going to do for Lionheart, what the Lionheart can do for Sim, uh, for Sim Pit. So we will be affiliated as usual with them, and we love Lionheart. You can check them off their eighth season, kicking off March 11th, five days from now. We've been kind of staying with Feel um, feel 3, feel, feel, what are they called? Feel, feel 3, yeah, Feel 3. Uh, the salad bowl, the mixing bowl. Anyway, they add another post on their kickstart campaign as the salad bowl gets more and more serious looking. That's for sure. Definitely looking a lot more legit than when we first saw it. All right, couple rigs and then we're going to go. Now, this is imagination. You want a full simulator? You want your simulator to be an entire car? Uh, I get asked that. You know, it's like, do you need these fancy sims or should I do a death mobile or should I be like the Hoonigan guys and build a... Well, if you have a lot of imagination, there's your full simulator. <laughs> anyway, just throw a couple wheels down and you're in your position. Anyway, there he is with his little desktop rig. That was posted by Ebo Pilot. This one here, another little side entry. I did this on a desk once. I built my rig. This was before I had a rig. I built my desk so that if I sat from the side, this is genius. If you have a space problem, this is the way to go. One thing I love in this photo, this is posted by Bailey Wastaken. Uh, look at the bungee cord holding the pedals to the chair. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, a sim rig from the 60s. Yeah, like the Russians made it, Tom. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Another rig. Ah, total Rickmotech RS1 inspired rig. Totally using that MDF and plywood combination and running in VR. I like the way he did this low profile monitor hanging down from the ceiling. He's got, okay, I'm a little confused. Why do you need a shift light LED? Is that a shift light LED? Isn't that what that is? A flag, the eye flag or something? If you're in VR, why would you need that? Not sure. 805, 805 in the house. And that's going... No, one more. Here we go. Another one. A work in progress. Simrig V1.1. Just slapping it together. Look at that rough edges. These corner... I'll promise you this. Doug Holly, Thank you very much, buddy. I'm sorry you can't make the race as well. We're going to have a lot of fun here in about four minutes. Four minutes. Um... <laughs> laundry basket. Laundry machine. Work boots. Craftsman toolbox. Uh, you know, I love wood rigs, but those corners scare me. I would, I would have a big gouge on the back of my calf getting in and out of that. Anyway, another little piece of inspiration for you guys. That is going to do it for today's show, the Friday edition of the Pit Stop. Thank you, the Pit Crew. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for making it so much fun to talk about sim racing. And if you would like to race with us, 
please come out and join us. We're going to be in a hosted session, run Simpit, fun community race, something like that. Password is Simpit2020. No spaces, lower cat case Simpit 2020. As long as you have a GT1 car, the Corvette, the Aston Martin, or the Ford GT, and Zandvoort, then you can come race with us. I'm going to be shutting down both of my streams and trying to get things up and running. We have one hour of practice followed by 10 minutes of qualifying and then a 22 lap race. I will definitely be streaming on Twitch. If I can get everything turned around really well, we're going to be streaming on YouTube as well, but that's a little harder to pull off. But that is going to do it for this one. I wasn't even supposed to run all the way to six. We might have to back off Friday night fun. Oh, we saw Max. Max made a cameo onto the show. There he goes. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being the pit crew and being part of the show. Thank you, Mr. Thawman, for always contributing to the news. And thank you for the great conversation, you guys. You make the show that much more fun to be here and do. But that's going to do it for this one. Get out there. Do some sim racing. Have yourselves a great weekend. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.